Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. Today we have an update on the SN9 launch. I know that's probably why you clicked on this video based on the thumbnail and title. However, after that, we also have some more info on SpaceX's plan for 2021 and some new news for their Starlink missions. So if that stuff also interests you, be sure to stick to the end. Now sit back, smash the like button, and let's get into this. So want to get right into the whole SN9 thing. The SN9, as you know, was supposedly supposed to launch this weekend. They had airspace cleared for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right leading up to Friday, they end up canceling Friday's date and Saturday's date, leaving Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday open. However, that's changed since. So now Monday's date is also canceled today, but they have FAA clearance for more days now, including tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. If you look on the FAA's website, you can see here for Texas, Space Operations, Space Operations, January 13th, 14th, and also down here, Space Operations, January 12th. So Tuesday, January 12th could be the earliest now that the SN9 will launch. I'm still not sure as to why they had to postpone. SpaceX hasn't really announced any official things. The only reason anybody has this info is just off of FAA's website. SpaceX themselves hasn't announced anything at least not that i could find i've been on their website i've been on forums and they've been kind of elusive about it i think the whole problem is probably has to do with weather conditions i know in texas yesterday weather conditions were not favorable for them i don't know why today wouldn't be either however maybe they're just worried about any overcast lingering however tuesday wednesday thursday is now the cleared landing date i'm hoping we're going to see tomorrow like i had said in previous episodes they like to do things sooner than later they might even possibly have problems with their systems. I know they did a static fire test, which went really well. Maybe there's something else going on that we don't know about. I'll keep you guys updated if I found out any other info. Like I said, right now, the only thing that's keeping anybody updated with this SN9 launch is the FAA's clearance for the airspace. The SN9 will hopefully this time be doing both the hop test, also a landing. If they can do a landing, then they're on path to hopefully get to mars by 2024 i know elon musk was saying that was one of their biggest like obstacles was landing this thing because if you can't land this thing vertically i know a lot of people don't like the whole idea of landing such a tall thing vertically but they have to in order for it to be able to lift off once it lands on the moon or mars to be able to come back to earth so this is important for it to be able to land otherwise i'm sure they could find another way to land it but they're not going to have another way to lift it off once they get on the Mars, they can't prop this up with clay that they find on Mars. It's not possible. It has to land upright. That's really the reason for the whole landing upright. And that's what makes it so crazy and special is if it does it, that opens the doors for a lot more missions. Now, speaking of more missions, an article from Ars Technica was talking exactly about the things that are going to be happening in space for 2021. And they gave SpaceX their own little article here. One of the things they're talking about is the SN9, not the SN9, I'm sorry, but the whole Starship ideology and manufacturing concept is really coming to life, according to SpaceX. It's the whole problem with spaceflight, when you think about the price of these spacecrafts that are going in costing hundreds of millions of dollars, the price of these really isn't $100 million. The price is the fact that there's no true manufacturing put in place, so everything is custom made. Everything is experimental, so anytime a system goes wrong or an experiment goes wrong, that price has to be factored into the overall price of this machinery. But now that SpaceX is getting their manufacturing down, all those costs go completely out of the window. They've already gone through the experimental phase. They've seen what they want and don't want to keep on it. And so once they have all of that stuff figured and they have the proper manufacturing in place, they have the right vendors to supply them with the materials they need, they can pump these out. If you don't remember from a previous episode, I said... Their goal is to get to start to finish on the Starship in 72 hours at a cost of about $5 million. That's their goal. Think about the space shuttle. That thing cost a metric crap load and it doesn't, it doesn't even fly anymore. They, they made a, a, like, think about the numbers. That's just, it's literally astronomical, absolutely mind boggling that they can be making Starships the things that's going to be bringing us all over the galaxy at a price of $5 million in 72 hours. I mean, they're, they're pumping these things out like Toyotas. So 
super excited to see that thing come to fruition, to see the manufacturing put in place. The other thing this article talks about is that this year, if they can do the proper landing that they're talking about coming either this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, hopefully they don't postpone it anymore. If they can do a landing, the next test really for them to continue onward, to get to the moon, to get to Mars, is they have to do an orbit launch, an orbit test. What that's making sure is that they can get these in orbit, not just one, but two. Reason for that, if you don't know, is when they go to Mars, or even the moon, they're going to have enough fuel to get out of Earth's orbit, but that's it. They're not going to have enough fuel to get all the way there and then come all the way back. So their plan is to launch two starships into orbit, have one containing just fuel, so when they get into orbit after this, the one with fuel will pump the other one up, make sure it's full, then that one can then go to Mars. It will have enough fuel to then get back. Also, they're going to be launching starships to Mars prior to this that I'm sure will have fuel systems on them as well. So they have to do two at a time if they're going to really get beyond Earth's initial atmosphere. Otherwise, they're not going to have enough fuel. So I've also talked about this in a previous episode. They're hopefully doing two Starship launches at once. They have two pads, liftoff pads near each other. A lot of people are speculating that within the next few weeks, Elon Musk even kind of said it, that they plan on doing two at the same time, two starships simultaneously. Now, we don't know which one that is. According to this article and according to multiple sources, they already have SN 10 through 17 in various stages of development right now in the manufacturing process. So as far as I know, I think up to SN11 is fully built. I know SN10 is pretty much done. SN11, I think, I read this about four days ago, and they said that just needed the nose cone on SN11. So I can't imagine that SN12 is very far behind. SN17, I mean, I don't know what they got on that. Maybe the joystick or something. I have no idea. But it proves the point that these things don't take long to make at their current state and this is a new vehicle so just give it a year or two and the numbers are going to be staggering that they're pumping these out and so once they're pumping them out regularly once they do this orbit test and they can refuel i'm sure they're going to have to do that test multiple times before they actually send anything um beyond in our solar system either way once those are all gone and they're i mean by that point they'll probably be able to land a starship very easily they'll probably have all of the configurations figured out i wouldn't be surprised if we see one land on the pad out in the ocean that'd be pretty neat to see either way once that goes that's it that's pretty much the big kahuna for this whole system once they get that all those things going mars is right there so with every SN line launch, I mean, by the time SN17 goes, SN17, for all we know, could be the one that goes to Mars. So super excited to see that. Other thing I want to talk about about SpaceX is their Starlink program. Of course, as I talked about before, the Starlink program is pretty much what they intend to use to cash flow their business to make sure that they're not running at any deficits. I mean, right now, they're obviously, they have vendors with the U.S. government, the FCC, but they need a more steady, long-term uh, business plan. And the Starlink is kind of what they intend that to be. In the UK, this actually came in about an hour ago. They officially allowed SpaceX's Starlink to provide internet service to the UK. This includes people from Greece, Germany, Australia as well. So this breaks them into a whole other thing. Now, before, the FCC approved them for 12,000, I believe, satellites into orbit over the next few years. This is probably going to come with more now, now that they're bringing in it to Europe. They also released a satellite, the TurkSat. That had nothing to do with, really, Starlink, but I wouldn't be surprised if they bring them to Middle East as well, coverage in the Middle East, Asia possibly, Australia. Who knows? The sky is literally... Actually, the sky isn't even the limit in this business. So it's good to see SpaceX finding more customers for their program, more customers, more money, more money, more cash flow into these development projects, into Starship. We might see another spaceship besides Starship. Starship could be just the beginning of the ships that they're building. Exciting stuff. 
that's all I got for you on this episode. If you like what I'm putting out, if you like this content, by all means, hit a like. Yeah, hit the like. Hit the like button. Smash the like button. Annihilate the like button. Click the subscribe notification bell. And let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any recommendations for other types of content.